All right, let's do a video on the drawing of a Bodhi plot with real poles and zeros um, that may be different or repeated. And so looking at the transfer function, right, we're going to have break frequencies upwards at 1, and there'll be 2 there, and 10K, and we'll have break downward frequencies of 10, 100, and 1K. Um, these are the break frequencies, and the poles, of course, would be minus 10, minus 100, and 2 at minus 1K. So what I do is I put these break frequencies in a table so that I can tell whether they're going to ramp up when they're active or ramp downward when they're active. Right? And each order of magnitude will be a plus 20 dB per decade slope or a minus 20 dB per decade slope depending on whether the break frequency was caused by a zero or a pole. So we have zero. Um, if the transfer function is equal to s, right, that, that makes a straight line upward over the whole range of 20 dB per decade. And so the sum of that, those slopes would be 20. Then when we have the pole at minus one repeated, we're going to have um, plus 40, which then when we sum them together, we'll be having a 60 dB per decade slope. Then when the poles start becoming active, we start subtracting 20, 20, and then 40 because of the repeated pole, right? So then the slope goes down from 60 to 40 to 20, then to minus 20, and then it flattens out at zero. And so if we look at the transfer function and let s go towards zero or just a lot less than one, we see all the s's fall out except for this one. We have s times some constant, and that's just a, a line upwards. That... Um, you know, with a 20 dB per decade slope. So that's where it starts. Then when we look at the transfer function, when omega goes to infinity, all the poles and zero information drops out and we have s to the fourth divided by s to the fourth, which turns into 20 dB and so it's flat. So that's where the magnitude will end up. Now, you'll notice that I haven't labeled the y-axis each square is 20 dB, but I'm not quite sure um, where to put everything just yet. Although I know that I'm going to have 100, if I sum all these up, I'm going to have 140 dB change in slope. So that means I'm just going to start low. All right. And you'll see is that once we find out where the 0 dB part is, right, I mean the... Uh, the zero slope, thus it ends at zero dB. Um, then we can backfit where everything is. Okay, so we just draw a line with 20 dB per decade slope. Now it doesn't have to be that long. It's just going to go past several of the poles so that I know uh, that I'll have the proper intersection. All right. Then the next one is repeated at um, 1, right? So I was up at 20. Now my slope at 1, no, that's 10, excuse me, right? It's got to be 60 dB per decade, right? So that would be 20, that would be 40, and that would be 60 dB per decade. Then as the pole becomes active, the slope goes down to 40, but it's still going up. All right, so we're at 10. Okay. All right, that would be 20, but its slope is still 40. All right. And then even when we go to 100, all right, the slope, while it might not be 40, it's still 20. And so it's climbing up. Then when this uh, double pole is active, the slope actually now goes to minus 20 at 
k right and then when the final zero becomes active the slope becomes zero all right and and i know that's zero db because i checked it here okay when the frequency went to infinity. Maybe you'll find that flat point when the slope goes to zero at the beginning or at the lower frequencies. But you'll find one flat place where you know what the what the value is and now you can scale it from there, right? Because now you would already know that that would be minus 20, minus 40, right? Plus 20, right? So that would be plus 20, zero minus 40 and so on the final you want to indicate your final body plot by highlighting just the parts you want not the asymptotes okay and we get this shape and remember the shapes can change they, this could be reversed it could have a dip in the middle it could have a rise in the middle um, don't don't memorize that shape okay now the phase we're going to use a different relationship rather than ramps becoming activated in a positive or negative direction we're going to use the relationship of when a polar is zero when the frequencies uh, equal to or less than a tenth of the break frequency, your the slope addition is going to be zero. It'll add zero. When you're at your break frequency, it'll be plus or minus 45, right? It'll be plus if it's a zero, or minus if it's a pole. And if you're greater than 10 times omega naught, you'll be plus or minus 90. Again, plus if it's a zero, minus if it's a pole. And um, for for a complicated Bode plot like this one, um, where the the poles are and zeros are decade a, a minimum of or maximum of one decade apart, things start to run into each other. So you have to um, kind of use this table method. So when we have our zero at zero again that's 90 degrees phase everywhere then when we have another zero that becomes activated at one right so it, and there's a double there right at a tenth of one it's still zero but at the break frequency of one it goes to 90 not 45 because it's squared and then when it gets a 10 times 1 goes to 180 and then it just stays there right now we have a pole right at 10 and so we'd be minus 45 a tenth of that is 0 10 times that is minus 90 and it stays there and the same thing for 100 it's just shifted right but at 1k right that there's two poles there so a tenth of 1k is at is 100 that's 0 then it goes to 90 and then stays at 180, negative. And then that final zero at 10K, right, it is plus 45 at the break frequency, zero, a tenth, and then plus 90, right? And then you just sum across 90, 90, 180, 225, 135 degrees, back to zero, minus 45, and then zero. All right, so here are frequencies of interest just so we don't lose track. And anything below a value of one, right? starts off at 90. Then, 
right? A tenth of one, it'll be zero, right? And then it'll jump up to 180. Oops. At one. Then at ten. It goes to 225. At 100, it goes down to 135. Then at 1K, it goes to zero. At 10K, it goes to 45. And then at 100K, right, because you have to draw that. Um, running out of colors. It comes up back to zero. And then it stays at. And you got to draw these areas, right? Otherwise, you don't know which way it's going. Once it's flat, it's flat, right? So then we just have to highlight the area that really means the Bodhi plot, right? I've kind of drawn these asymptotes without tails, if you will, right? And that would be the phase. So now let's check this with um, LT Spice. Now this file is set up so in fact that it'll plot against radians instead of uh, frequency. I'll, I should put this in the description, a link to that. That way you can see, um, play with it. But there's the transfer function. And now you see that shape where the magnitude is, you know, going up around, uh, was that, was 20. Then it sharpens, starts to flatten, flattens, goes down, and then flattens. And then you see this kind of characteristic phase. All right. It's not a point for point because this is really calculating the magnitude in the phase using, you know, uh, the magnitude and phase equations at each and every point. It's not doing the uh, asymptotic approximation. But um, this one might be you know a little more complicated than you would see on an exam, but that process you should be able to use for any Bode plot with real and repeated roots and poles.